Amongst Chinese manufacturers, GAC has always been at the forefront or close to it in terms of technical sophistication, quality, and luxury. Now, I've always been impressed by the interiors on GAC cars. I've been impressed by the way they drive, by the power, by the performance. But there's been something missing, that spark that separates the best from the rest. GAC is trying to cure that with its M cars. Cars like the M Pow, the M Ku, and this thing, the M Zoom. This certainly has a lot of power, it has a lot of style, and it has a lot of pizzazz. But is that enough to elevate it over the unquestioned class leader, the Geely Cool Ray? Spoiler alert, yes. The M-Zoom drives much as you'd expect any modern GAC to drive. It's quiet, it's comfortable, it's unflustered. Well, mostly quiet and comfortable and unflustered. Those big Michelin Pilot Sport tires, the thin 45 series tires, they tend to judder and bounce over small road imperfections, but it doesn't quite penetrate into the cabin in an intrusive way. It's just something that you're constantly aware of. But other than that, this is a pretty sweet car to drive long distance, especially with forward collision warning and lane departure warning, which tie into the active cruise control. Now you can set the cruise control and this thing will drive for you on the road. It'll keep you in lane and it'll keep you a set distance from the car in front of you. You can change that from four seconds to one second's follow distance. So your margin of safety is entirely up to you. Now, you can't keep your hands off the wheel forever. It gets mad if you try to do that. So it's not a complete proxy for driving, but it helps reduce your stress level and reduce your fatigue level when you're going long distance. Now, you can't go very long distance. This thing has a kind of small tank. It's an issue I had with the GAC MPOW also. So you can do like 400 to 500 kilometers on this tank. If you drive nicely, uh, you can hit maybe 18 to 20 kilometers a liter on the highway at 80 kph and you can get 500 to 550 kilometers from the tank before you should find a place to fuel up. Otherwise, it's about average for the class. Now, in traffic, fuel economy takes a big hit. We've seen lows of around 6 kilometers a liter, but then this is a fresh engine. There's only 500 kilometers on the odometer, so it's not quite broken in yet. We expect fuel economy to improve as it breaks in. Now, even though it isn't broken in, you do get full power from it. Unfortunately, in eco mode and comfort mode, you don't get that full power right away. You press on the gas pedal and you wait, and it takes a while to respond. Now, you can remedy this in sport mode, or even better, switch to Sport Plus. Sport Plus mode gives you more aggressive engine mapping. It opens the exhaust valve so you get more burble, you get more snap, crackle, and pop out of the exhaust. And when you want to go faster, it can go even faster. Now the Stealth Fighter aesthetic extends to the inside with these jet exhaust air vents this flat bottom steering wheel and this driver center cockpit that wraps around you and makes you feel like you're driving something much more expensive. Of course, some of this LED display is fake. There are stencils around LED lights and only the center part of the display is a full LED display, but the center display is actually very wide and very nice. And at night, you can't tell the difference. You get an extension of the triangular theme from the outside. You've got this cheese great speaker grill, honeycomb speaker grill, and triangles everywhere on the leatherette, on the doors, on the dash, on some of the plastics, and even all of the rubber in the open bins is lined in this triangular pattern that makes it look really, really Illuminati. Now this leatherette, there are other color combinations for the M-Zoom, but I think this black and blue combination, it sort of reminds me of an Adidas football shoe with all the good that implies. This feels like it will be stained, scuff, and wear resistant, and it should be much easier to maintain than most other car interiors out there. In terms of space, this is a subcompact, but they've done some clever engineering to make it feel bigger. The angle of this A-pillar gives you a lot of headroom here. 
you've got a lot of elbow room and you do have a lot of leg room and a lot of reach adjustment here but this big center console kind of hits your knees and while I do like split tier center consoles this is a little too high and a little too low to reach down here is uncomfortable from this side and uncomfortable for your passenger if you reach around their legs but otherwise in terms of storage space this is pretty damn good you've got twin cell phone holders here one of them is a wireless holder so if you have a phone that can charge wirelessly you can put it here twin cup holders another slot here something here something here something here big center console box and of course that underside shelf which is really really big but again from the driver's seat it's really hard to reach in terms of infotainment since you do have a wireless cell phone slot you can wirelessly connect to this through apple carplay or carbit link sorry there is no android auto but carbit link can be installed on any android device and it'll give you full screen mirroring so you can actually watch video with full concert sound yes the speakers are pretty good and pretty bass-tastic of course you're not supposed to watch while you're driving but the option is there if you're parked now even though this is a subcompact crossover clever engineering gives you more space than you'd expect there's lots of elbow room there's lots of leg room thanks to shorted seat squabs and you've got a completely flat floor that gives you a lot of space for your feet and any items you might want to put down there because it is a subcompact there are some limitations that can't be overcome headroom is smaller than in front because the roof slopes backwards and these seats don't recline any further than they already do because they're stuck right between the c pillars and there's no space for them to recline back into that said you still do get the center armrest and yes it sits at the right height you do get rear aircon vents i mean you do get one rear aircon vent so if there's more than one of you back here you will be fighting over that vent you've got courtesy lights and you've got that beautiful dual pane sunroof over your head underneath the stylish rear hatch you find a rather high and slanted loading floor this is because again this is a car of compromises GAC had to decide between having a comfortable rear seat and one that could fold completely flat obviously this doesn't fold completely flat but it is very comfortable that said if you want more space in here you can just lower the floor and that gives you quite a lot of space for something this small oh and it also has a power tailgate very nice unfortunately you do get a power tailgate but you don't get a rear wiper again a car of compromises the exterior of the m zoom will have you going Illuminati confirmed. There are more triangles and trapezoids on this than on a low poly Lamborghini model for a mobile video game. It's got that stealth fighter aesthetic that is just so riveting. It's got a sleek shape. It's got these twin boom side mirrors that look like they cut through the air despite their low poly count. You've got these rear tail lights that jut out and give the rear haunches a very muscular, very spaceship like aesthetic and then you've got the twin tail pipes under the rear diffuser which aren't just for show one of those pipes is actually covered by a flapper valve that opens when you use sport mode that makes it sound as good as it looks and then you've got that rear spoiler the rear split spoiler that looks like it comes straight off of a Lamborghini also straight off of a Lamborghini are these split spoke 19 inch wheels that are just beautiful orange lined and they come with Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. Now, despite the stealth fighter aesthetic, this thing is unmissable. It is riveting, it is eye-catching, especially in this light blue, electric blue color with the orange accents. I mean, this orange flag right here, this means you will never lose this in any parking lot. This thing is unmissable. Up front, you get more triangulated goodness with these sawtooth light fixtures up top and these triangular air inlets that feed air into the front wheel wells for better aerodynamic efficiency. Now you also get front winglets that don't really have any aerodynamic effect but they look super cool so we'll forgive that. The front end is dominated by this big triangular cutaway on the ultra tall front grille that help hide how ultra tall it is makes it a little slimmer a little more petite. They also disguise the blanking plates on one side 
with these orange slashes that are kind of reminiscent of BMW M Power slashes. Only M Power is red, white, and blue. This is all orange. But that orange signifies that there's power lurking underneath that hood. So that's it for our time with the GAC GS3 M Zoom R Style. <sighs> This promises to be weatherproof and be able to take anything, but we can't, so we've got to hurry this one up. For the pros, it's stylish, it's beautiful, it's eye-catching. Everybody wants to know what this is, and when they get inside, it's just got that wow factor. Wow. Secondly, the features. This has lane departure warning, forward collision warning. This thing can almost drive itself, and it has 360-degree cameras, just like the Geely Cool Ray. Thirdly, the performance. Like the Geely Cool Ray, it's powered by 1.5 liter turbo, but this packs more punch under the hood than the Cool Ray. It gets from 0 to 100 in 8 seconds. It is the fastest crossover in this class that we have ever tested. And then lastly, the handling. Absolutely phenomenal handling thanks to those Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. But let's not sell the chassis short. It holds a line through a corner steadily body roll is well in check and it goes where you want it to go even on worse tires this would still be nice to drive on these tires it is phenomenal but on the con side those tires do result in some judder and some ride discomfort it's not the most comfortable car in the class it's not terrible but you will always remember that these are sports tires and not touring tires and the transmission attached to that engine not the best dual clutch either in those in-between speeds when you're not quite sure if you want to go slow or go fast, it can be indecisive and shifts can either be too abrupt or too slow for you. And unfortunately, it doesn't have a manual shifting mode. The MPOW does. It has paddle shifters. This doesn't. It has that cute little gun sight shifter that puts you in drive or reverse and nothing else. And then lastly, it is still just a subcompact crossover. So it's not as big as some. Interior space feels all right, but there are compromises to get this many features into a package this small. Then again, with a package this small and with comfort this big, to have all of that in a package that costs under 1.2 million pesos, this is a deal on the same level as the Geely Cool Ray was when it first launched. This might just be the bargain of the decade. And as such, we can't give it a lower rating than 8.5 over 10. I would say 9, but no paddle shifters. GAC, I want the paddle shifters. 